Welcome to our middle school and high school lesson for today. Thank you for joining me today, Sunday, September 26. Hope you guys had a wonderful and blessed week. So this week, what we're going to talk about is we're going to kind of have a little continuation from what we were talking about last week. So last week we were talking about um, you being an influencer and this week we're going to be talking about church leadership. And so it's gonna kind of have some similar things that we talked about last week to kind of overlap, but just to kind of explain a little bit more of like what, what it really means to um, be a church leader and also just being a leader in general and what that looks like and how that applies to you and how it also is applied into the Bible and what it means to be a leader and to have, um, to be in a leadership role um, in the church and also explaining in the, in some of the passages we're going to be reading examples of various leadership roles. And so, of course, like we always do, go ahead and get some paper and something to write with and also make sure you get your Bible. So then that way you can be able to, you know, jot down these scriptures or just jot down any information that you find um, that you want to just, you know, continue to kind of process even afterwards. And so today, what I want to do is just kind of help you guys to be able to really understand, um, you know, being a leader and what that means, and um, also how how that applies to you. And so the first thing is going to spend a little bit of time of just kind of defining some words that are going to um, kind of help you. And so one of the words is when you think of a leader, what does that mean? If you could put a definition to it of what a leader is. And so I took the liberty of kind of Googling and jotting down some definitions of some words that are going to kind of play a part into this. And so one of them is leader. And so a leader is someone who leads or commands a group organization or country. So if you think about it, like the president, you know, he's in some sort of a leader. He's in a leadership role. Um, our specific people are vice president, um, all in various leadership roles. And as a leader, being able to, you know, um, help run the country. Another one is character. Character means a group of qualities that make a person different from others, or it can be a distinguishing feature. So that's character. Third, integrity. Integrity means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles or moral uprightness. Next is leadership. Leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence, there's that word again, and guide followers or other members of an organization. And then last, teamwork. Teamwork is the collaborative effort of a group to achieve a common goal or to complete a task in the most effective and efficient way. And so when you're thinking of someone in a leadership position or a leader, those are all things that you want to also be thinking about. Because if you think about it, when you have a leader, what are those things, what are those qualities, what are those characteristics you're looking for or that you're wanting to see in a leader? Someone who's able to work well with others, someone who's you know, able to, like we just said, who's able to, um, to guide people, who is open, who's honest, who has strong morals, who has strong principles. You wouldn't want somebody or you wouldn't trust somebody that's not demonstrating some of these qualities or some of these um, skills. Um, and you wouldn't feel very comfortable following them or, or thinking that they were being an effective leader or an effective leadership. And that would be the same if you think about it in the body of Christ and in the church. And if you think about it, we could even use our own bishop. Our bishop is a leader. He's our, the leadership of Calvary Baptist. And looking at the qualities that even our bishop Thomas has, he's able to guide us. He has strong moral principles. He's, you know, demonstrating things 
with us in demonstrating um, strong morals and strong principles. And he's, you know, a positive influence that's also encouraging and strengthening us in that. And think about this, if Bishop Thomas wasn't demonstrating these things, would it be as comfortable for you to feel like you could trust him and follow him and to allow him to help influence and encourage you to do those things in, in the body of Christ? Probably not. So as we go along, we're going to be talking about a specific um, period and time period. And if you turn the chapters that we're going to be coming from is we're going to be coming from first Timothy chapter three, verses one through seven initially. Um, and so in this, it's explaining and mentioning different kinds of leaders. And so some of the leaders that the types of leaders that they're talking about in the first seven verses of first Timothy is they're mentioning the types of leaders is called overseer and bishop. And uh, according to this passage, as they're describing this type of leader, they're looking and describing the task of this type of leader as a noble one. So it's looked at as a very prestigious um, position. And in this, it further along goes and explains the different qualifications of of what an actual overseer is and so i'll just mention a few of them that they share when you're able to read this on your own and kind of process a little bit more you can be able to read and see the full list but i'll just give you a few um, a few of the qualifications are um, hospitable able to teach respectable gentle not given to drunkenness not a lover of money, a good manager of a family, mature believer. So those are just a few. And as you can hear some of those, these are things that they're explaining and demonstrating and describing that as this type of leader, these are the qualities and the qualifications that they're looking for. And so if we look at some of these qualities and qualifications, one of the questions I want to ask is, why do you think there are so many qualifications for an overseer? And if you think about it, it's almost kind of like when we look at gifts. There's multiple gifts, but that doesn't mean that one specific person has all the gifts. This would be the same. These are qualities that over certain people you could have a few that could fit this person and it may be a few that fit that person and depending on maybe what the task is or what the purpose and the objective is that that may be what you're looking for for that person and so having all of these different qualifications kind of gives more of a broadness of being able to really kind of dissect and understand who would be or see who would be the most effective or appropriate fit for what it is that you're seeking and you're needing in that moment. And so as we continue to read in First Timothy, if we continue to look through verses eight through 15, it continues to kind of explain and highlight different other types of leaders. And so in this passage through these verses, um, verses 8 through 15, they talk about another leader as, and comes in the form of a deacon. And so if we're looking at a deacon, it then goes on to explain additional qualifications for a deacon. And so hopefully throughout this time, as we're talking about this and we're going through these, this chapter and we're going through these scriptures and verses, it's helping you to kind of figure out even for yourself, how, how are any of these characteristics or qualifications meeting or connecting to you? Are these qualities and qualifications that you see in yourself? Um, because you could end up being a leader as well. You could end up 
being in the same category and being able to, you know, influence and encourage and, you know, help other people and guide them to be able to complete things. If you think about it, when you're in groups for school and you're having to do a group project, are you seen as a person that's more like helping to collaborate, helping to get everybody together, helping to organize, helping to create structure and goals and figuring out how to break certain tasks and things up? Think about it. Those are qualifications of a leader. We just talked about it. Collaborative, strong morals, influence and guide followers, person that um, has, is honest. So even in the things that you're doing throughout your day, you may start to see, oh, I do this. Oh, I'm like this in school. When it's time to have group projects, you're noticing that some of these things are the things that come out and play out for you. And so being able to recognize for yourself, how are you demonstrating and how are you implementing and doing these things when you're around others. And then how, translating it even further, how is this impacting in transition to you as a member of the body of Christ? Are you more open to encouraging and motivating and strengthening others in the body of Christ when you're at church, when you're doing activities and functions and things like that? So these are things just to keep an eye on and to just kind of, recognize that you may find yourself fitting into these categories. And so if we go back, they were talking about, we were talking about the qualifications for deacon. So I'll just name a few. So for deacon, worthy of respect, sincere, holding the truth, not pursuing dishonest gain. And so these are different examples of different leaders throughout the Bible and how they explain the things that they're doing and um, their qualifications and their purpose. And so we come to figure out and find out how each of these different leaders, how they're seen, how, what their specific role is and what they're doing and if we read even further, there are a couple of other messages, excuse me, there are a couple of other passages where um, you may want to look to get an even more deeper understanding of, you know, of the church and the leadership. Um, but we want to just kind of make this a little bit more connecting to you guys and how this how this plays out and how this impacts you guys. And so the last sections we want to look at is verses 17 through 21. And so in these, it's talking about another, another group and it's talking about elders and how elders are seen as being able to have, um, are seen to be worthy of double honor and should not be falsely accused because elders are seen as kind of like a higher standard. And so as we read in verses 17 through 21, we see Paul's thought and understanding about church leadership and how Paul sees the church leadership as the most important. And so why do we think church leadership is valued and seen as such a high importance? And if we think about it, we are all members and we are all part of the body of Christ. And we, each person in the body of Christ plays an intricate part in how, um, how it functions and how it operates. And so it's almost kind of like the human body. If each of us are considered to be an intricate part of the body and something is, if something 
that is if our brain is not able to properly function and our brain is not properly able to get the air and the oxygen and circulation, it stops other things. And so it's important for the brain to be able to have all of its parts to being able to operate and to function. And it's the same with um, having a church leadership. If that leadership is not effective and not doing what it needs to be doing, all the other function, the other parts aren't able to function. People have no guidance. People have no understanding of what their purpose is, their role, being able to operate and function. And ultimately the body of Christ would, would die. And so if we're not having effective leadership, we're losing souls, people are hurting, people are in pain, people aren't healing like they need to heal. And so leadership, the importance of having effective leadership and having leaders that are able to, to be able to interact with people, are able to demonstrate honesty, have a quality of honesty, having a strong moral um, principle is important. If you have a head that's not operating in that and is just doing whatever, there's no ability to be able to know what they're doing and to grow. And it's the same here. And so what would happen if we didn't have an effective leader? How do you think Calvary would operate? How do you think its members would be able to function? We probably wouldn't, we wouldn't. We'd just be all out here doing whatever. And so being a good leader means being able to not only lead, but to serve. Think about that for a minute. It's not always about giving commands, telling people what to do, but an effective leader means being able to also serve. Not afraid to reach out, not afraid to help, not afraid to do those things that others are needing to do. And so how, how is this relating to you? What does this mean for you? Are you a leader? Are you someone who's seen as someone who is able to lead others, organize people to getting certain tasks and certain things done? Do you demonstrate a level of integrity? Are you demonstrating honesty? Are you someone who has a strong moral principle? Are you someone who's willing to help collaborate and work with others in completing tasks and getting things done? Are you someone who's willing to not only just influence others, but also willing to serve and willing to do these things? And if not, how can you figure out how to be a leader? And what does it mean to have effective church leadership? What does that look like to you? How can you be able to help 
others in your church, in your community. This only doesn't apply to in the body of Christ and in church, but this also applies to your community, your schools, and your neighborhood. How are you demonstrating being a leader? And not dismissing that just because of who you are or where you are, that you don't have that ability to be a leader because we all have that role and that responsibility. No matter our age, no matter who we are, a male or female, we have that ability and God's given it to us. And so being able to ask God to help direct you and guide you in that if you're not sure or if you're questioning that for yourself. Asking God, God will, God will reveal and show and help you to see that in yourself. And so just before we go ahead and close, um, just want to recap that we all are leaders. God will use all of us. And looking at how you want to see yourself and what type of leader do you want to be and seeing how church leadership is so important and recognizing that when we don't have effective leadership, that how it affects the body of Christ and how it affects the works of what God's purpose and call for each of us to do. And the importance of having these different characteristics of integrity, of being, you know, having character and being able to know what a leader is and leadership and teamwork, being able to work with other people and get along with other people. Sometimes we're not always gonna like people, people are gonna get on our nerves and that's okay. But teamwork, working together to get to, working together to accomplish the goal of what God's called us to do. And if you're not sure or you're questioning it, reaching out and praying to God and asking for that clarity from God because we've all God's placed this in each of us and we all at one point we've led or we've demonstrated a leader role a leader characteristic at one point of our life if not multiple times and it's in all of us so I thank you for joining me today and I hope you were able to find this helpful for you um, and you will continue to, you know, ask God for continued clarity and helping you to understand your purpose um, and strengthening you each day. And I thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a blessed week. And we'll go ahead and end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to come this morning and just to fellowship and learn more about you and learn more about who we are, Lord. We just thank you for what you placed in each and every one of our lives, Lord. You've given us each a purpose, Lord. And we thank you for learning about being a leader today, Lord, and learning about church leadership, Lord. We thank you for how you're making it, con you're continuing to help us to process and digest this, Lord, and not only know how we can be an influence to others, Lord, but to also know how we can be a leader, Lord, and that leading is not all about just 
commanding and, and telling people what to do, Lord, but also being an effective leader means being able to serve, Lord, and, and being able to just serve you, Lord, and serve your people, Lord. And we thank you for what we were able to learn today, Lord, and we just continue to ask you to bless us as we carry out this upcoming week, Lord. And we thank you, we praise you and give you all the glory and honor that is due to you. In Jesus name. Amen. Thanks guys. Have a good week. See you next time. Bye.